Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. And today we're watching this video which is absolutely just taken off on YouTube. Every now and then, the algorithm just picks up on a video that it really wants you to see. It's just like, Graham, go and watch this video. We're gonna keep showing it to you until you eventually click on it. And, and then once you click on it, we're gonna show you 50 other videos exactly the same as this. But this one is something special, okay? It's titled, How Jean St. Pierre Spent His First Dollar Sign 1M in the USC. Wait for it, my first million, wait for it again. GQ Sports. So with that said, guys, before we begin, if you wouldn't mind destroying the like button for the YouTube algorithm, it helps me out tremendously. With that said, let's begin. My first fight ever, I got paid $1,100 because my opponent did not make the weight. Otherwise, I would have probably made even less because I got 30% of his purse. <laughs> This is Jean St. Pierre, and this is how I spend and save my first million dollar. All right, so first of all, we gotta know how much this guy is worth. I have no idea how much uh, how much UFC fighters make. So I, I'm gonna use Google. So I'm gonna go to Google. Okay, so Celebrity Net Worth says uh, it's $30 million, and wow, $6 million per fight. I would get in a fight for $6 million. I would do that, maybe not with him. I wouldn't get I wouldn't get in a fight with him because I would I would be out within like seconds. But I, I could get in a fight with with somebody for six million dollars. I would do that. Gosh. I got into uh, karate at first because I was bullied at school. I didn't know what I wanted to become until I saw the first UFC on TV when I was a teenager. I was at school, but I was studying more because it was the right thing to do and because my parents pushed me. He sounds so grounded. Eh? He's so honest. He's like, yeah, I went to college, didn't know what I wanted to do, was obsessed with UFC, really into it, took karate. It's just I, I like his openness and he seems just he seems like just a really likable guy. We didn't have a lot of money when I when I grew up. We were not poor either because I eat every day. I had money for school, but we were not wealthy. See, he's got such great perspective on top of that too. Just acknowledging that like people have it worse. If you have a roof over your heads, you have food to eat, you're doing better than a large portion of the population out there. So for him to understand that, I think is is huge. It's it's no wonder this has 1.7 million views. I'm sure he's got a crazy fan base. I like him already. I've never heard of him before. I'm, I'm not into UFC. I like the guy already. So already I'm a fan. I fought a few times in local shows. I was undefeated at the time. My first big fight on the local scene, I was fighting a guy named Pete Spratt, a UFC veteran. He probably thought that he was just coming in to collect a paycheck and beat a young a young kid. I beat him and that's when the door opened. The UFC recruit me. Wow, goes to show you. Listen, I think it, it's, it's just discipline. He had the discipline to stick with it, to train all the time. And sometimes when you have that type of persistence, it's just, you, you can't beat it. I had a chance to pursue my dream. I was studying and I was working as well. I had like a crazy schedule. I sat down with my partner and I told him, I said, listen, if things doesn't go well, I can always come back to school. But for the next session, I would like to just focus on training because I have a title shot and it's a, it's a big opportunity. And they agreed. I love that. I love that. And see, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I talk about so often. If you want to do something, I wouldn't just go all in, all at once, and, and just put everything else to the side. Not yet. Not in the very beginning. Do it in conjunction with something else. And then when that second thing starts taking off like it is in his situation, then that's the point when you start focusing all your time on that. But until then, if you can't be good enough while being able to juggle a whole bunch of other things at the same time, it's just not worth putting all of your effort into. You gotta want it enough to do a bajillion things at once. It was after my fight with John Fitch, I had to renew my contract, but I was champion and I was doing pretty well. So if I finished my contract, I had big offers waiting for me. So the UFC decided to renew my contract and that's when I made my first million. All right, so we got six fight extension. Okay, top USC fighters also receive a cut of pay-per-view revenue. I wonder how much he's making from pay-per-view. 
Well, I, I bet that's got that's got to be a decent amount. I want to know how much it is though. I start working with financial advisor right away. First, because I'm Can I'm a Canadian citizen. The tax report is very complicated. A lot of athletes they make the mistake they don't pay their taxes. So I made sure my my structure was solid and and all good. What a smart guy going right to a financial advisor. Listen, I I totally agree in his case. Focus on what he's good at. He doesn't need to figure out his investing. He doesn't need to look at his finances. All he needs to do is have the, the smarts to hire somebody else to do that for him. It's worth every penny and, and he's doing it right. So a lot of athletes, I, I think they start right away to invest on, on luxury cars, uh, stuff like that, jewelry, but I didn't do that. If I make money, I need to make myself more competent to become better. I travel the world in order to gain more knowledge and become better. We talked about how I save my money. Now let's talk about how I spend it. I like how he goes into saving first. A lot of these guys go into spending first. Here's how I spent it. And then at the end, it's like, all right, God, and then what's left over here, here's one I uh, save. I like how we reverse this, very smart. The first thing I did is to clear all my parent debt. And when my mom, Call me crying with my dad on the line and say, that's your money, we don't need your help. It was like one of the most beautiful, one of the best day of my life. Ah, oh, he's got great parents. You, you could tell, I mean, I think a lot of his dedication comes from just, a, it sounds like a great upbringing. Second thing uh, that I bought, two cars for my parent. Japanese car at uh, Toyota. Oh, look, this is the first guy is buying like a, a good, good brand, Toyota. I like that. It's not like an Escalade. It's not like this brand new Ferrari. It's not like a Rolls Royce. He's buying his parents a Toyota, a car that's probably gonna last them 30 years that's reasonably priced, even if he's buying it new. I actually, I really like this. I bought myself a, vi a, 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 a car as well, Nissan Xterra. My vehicle was pretty bad, so I needed something safe. And I always love SUV because in Montreal, there's a lot of snowstorm. I also felt that in a SUV, you're normally higher, so it's it's safer. Yeah, that's the thing where it snows. It's like, you're not gonna go and buy this like crazy low rider car. It's like, a sports car, it's like that much off the ground. You need something for all weathers. This is, it's all reasonable so far. One of my uh, sister, she wanted to have her master degree to take care of our family and be able to free herself to pursue uh, her dream. $10,000 for my sister to get her master degree. Ah, $10,000 for a master's degree. Everyone in his family seems pretty thrifty. Get, get good value, good, good value there. To tell you the truth, like it would be very boring the show if I tell you the truth. Like my parent mortgage, my parent cars, my sisters, this. There is nothing else that I did on the short notice that oh bang, you know, like I spread it, you know. Another fifty thousand dollars for my family, gifts, expenses to help them pursuing their dreams. Look at that, he's spending all of his money on his family. You you can't you can't dislike this at all. There's nothing in here that I could really critique at all. So this $30,000 is all the friends that I helped who told me that they would pay me back, but they never did. If you lend money to someone, make sure you can afford to lose it. Yeah, I agree with that. Anytime you lend money to somebody, just assume they're not going to pay you back. Go into the mindset where it's like, okay, I'm probably not gonna get my money back. Would I lend the money? If the answer is yes, lend the money. If your answer is like, no, I need the money back, don't lend the money. Don't lend the money. Don't start mixing that up just without the expectation that you're, you're probably not gonna get it back. I spent a lot of money traveling around the world to learn new fighting skills. I went to Thailand to learn Muay Thai. I went to Brazil to, to get better at Jiu Jitsu. In New York to get better in Jiu Jitsu as well. I went to Los Angeles to train, train with Fred Roach, a famous boxing coach, to get better boxing skills. Traveling for training, $200,000. Ah, oh, great investment. He'll make that back so quickly. He spends that in a year. He, I, I guarantee he'll be able to make a million minimum extra just from the money he's spending here. So great investment. I bought myself a jacuzzi and a, a ice bath so I can switch. I believe it helped my, my body to recuperate better when I have very hardcore training sessions. I spent about, I would say, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on that. 
and it was a good investment, I have to say. Great investment. Great investment. I, I can't knock any of this. He's spending it back on himself in such a way where it's just he's going to end up making that back. The last thing that I bought with my first million, it was a condo. $500,000, but I needed to do renovation in it and it cost me about 100k. Condo plus renovation, $600,000. Again, listen, that's that's $600,000 spent. He's got this, it's basically just taking it from cash form, putting it in real estate. He's not gonna lose any money on that. And if anything, he'll make money. He spends 100,000 fixing it up, it's not gonna be worth $200,000 more, depending on depending on the renovations. Obviously, if he's going and like painting like pink walls everywhere and like a green kitchen and like some wild stuff, okay, sure, fine. You, you might lose some money on that. But overall, that's not even an expense. Like that, to me, that's an investment. So I'm really into dinosaur fossil. Whoa, dinosaur fossils, here we go. I like this guy even more. I love paleontology and I bought for, I would say, $20,000. Megalodon tooth, uh, mosasaurs, jaw, Tyrannosaurus rex. Oh gosh, you know what? I could totally see these things becoming like the next Pokemon card where all of a sudden like the cool thing to do is go and buy dinosaur fossils. Like any sort of fossil whatsoever. C think of it, they're not making any more of them, right? There, there, there's no more. It's like whatever they have now, that's it and, and done. So maybe these things could be like the next big investment is like just dinosaur fossils. If I would have go back in time and tell the kid that I was that one day I will become world champion in mixed martial art, I think I will believe because I always knew that I had all the tools. I worked very hard and also I was very lucky because I had the chance to meet incredible mentors and the stars were all al aligned for me. When a door opened to me, I was getting in. If the door were all closed, I was breaking in to create my own opportunity. I love that. He's got such a strong mindset. And you could tell too. Sometimes I've noticed with athletes like this, they, are, they just got this, this strength about them and this relentlessness that I think transfers into a lot of other areas as well when it comes to like just work ethic and dedication. And he's got it. I grew up in saint Isidore, uh, Quebec, Canada, and the mayor of the city called me and says that this coming summer will be the inauguration of a statue of, of me in, in fighting paws that they will put in the middle of the, uh, of the center of the city. So it's a, it's a great honor for me. Like Rocky Balboa, but in the small town of saint Isidore. <laughs> I like it. I like every single aspect of this. And I think the amount of views this video has received is such a good indication that people value this type of just work ethic, spending, sophistication, and intelligence that he has. And I think what I like most about him, I gotta say, is that he's humble enough to know that like moments like this could be very fleeting. He's not always going to be the best. There's absolutely, doesn't sound like there's any arrogance from him at all whatsoever. And that's what just makes him such a well-grounded person. And uh, honestly, I am so happy for all of his success and I, I hope he keeps winning and I hope he keeps making money because honestly, there's not one thing in this video I disliked. And uh, this is the only video I think I've ever done on the channel where I'm not gonna complain about them not doing anything wrong because I think perfect example of what to do. And this this guy's, in my opinion, Look at look at him to inspiration because this is the, that's how you do it. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to destroy the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram. Post it pretty much daily. So if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there as in the podcast, the Iced Coffee Hour. New episodes being posted every single Sunday. So make sure to add yourself to that. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.